Hello again, this is UML Operator. Okay, in this session, we're gonna start a simple user interface or UI design using the unified modeling language. In this session, I'll be using Sparks Enterprise Architect because of its power, all-in-one features, and data management. However, you could use multiple modeling tools such as Axure Pro for UI UX design. You could use UML tooling like Lucidchart or even Draw.io for your UML and block diagrams. Since Sparks EA provides me everything under one tool belt, this session will be in Sparks EA UML platform. Now this is the Sparks default factory layout. Browser is over on the left. You have properties in the upper right and notes down in the lower right. I want to move to my common layout which is going to put a toolbar over on the left. It's going to put browser up here in the upper right, and I will have notes and properties down in the lower right, along with some other tooling that I'm configured in. All right, so I'm gonna hit in the toolbox, I'm going to hit the hamburger icon right here, and I wanna to go to the package tools, all right? So I'm gonna drag in three packages, the first package is going to be presentation layer, a UI layer, however you want to put it. The second is going to be, and let's we'll choose a diagram later. I'm going to hit cancel. All right, so presentation layer. The next package we're going to bring in is going to be the code layer, logic layer, control layer, however you want to put it. We're just going to say code layer. And in this case, we are going to use a class diagram, right? And the next package is going to be the data layer, all right? So data layer, and I am going to choose extended and data modeling, all right? So there we go. We have our three packages. Over in the browser, you can see over here on the right, and we're ready to roll. All right, since our focus is on UI design, we're going to go to the presentation layer, and I want to move it to the top. Let me close these windows. So presentation layer, code layer, data layer, this is going to be my package organization over in the browser under this particular parent package. I'm going to go to the presentation layer. I'm going to go up to the browser and here I've got a toolbar up at the top here. I'm going to add a new diagram. And this diagram is going to be, I could use extended UI design. Matter of fact, let me add that to this model. There we go. And then I'm going to rename this, hit F function key to F2. I'm going to rename this diagram just uh, U, UI design, something like that. I'm going to select the package again. I want to add another diagram. In this case, what I want to do is I'm going to go all the way down since I have all this. I'm going to go to wireframing. And in wireframing, I have some other diagram types I can choose from. I'm going to choose web page wireframe. Tells you what it is down here. You can always hit help for uh, diagram selection. Help from Sparks, I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. And now I've added, it has the same icon, but I've added this, and I'm gonna call, hit at function key two, as soon as I select it, function key two, wireframe. All right, and you'll notice, now I'm gonna maximize this window, we're ready to do that now. And you'll notice that the toolbox bo over here which I sometimes call a toolbar. Toolbox over here gives me tools for wireframing. If I double click this one, you can see the toolbox changes and gives me some simple tooling for user interface or UI design. Now, because I want a different package or namespace for these two different types of diagramming and their tools, I'm gonna hit function key two, F2. I'm going to control C this, and I'm going to create a package underneath this, package only. I'm going to replace that with what I just copied. I'm going to paste that in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this diagram, 
drag and drop it under this namespace. And I can do the same thing for this diagram and its tooling, function key two, F2, control C, go to the parent where I wanna put this. We're gonna create a package only, the same name that I just copied. And then I'm gonna drag and drop under that package. And I want this package to be under the presentation layer. So I'm just dragging and dropping them. And I'm gonna have UI, I'm gonna have design ahead of wireframing because the first thing that we're gonna do, I'm gonna double click it. I have the tooling. I'm going to just bring in an element. I'm gonna call this home page. Give it a name, anything you want, home page. I'm gonna bring in another element and I'm gonna call this about, it could be just about. Matter of fact, let me just leave about. I was gonna type in about us. And what other pages are we gonna want here? We're gonna look at the requirements and we're gonna build our navigation flow and our page flows or page inventory in this package using this modeling tooling to help us get started. So let's start with the home page. I'm gonna double click it to open up the dialog box. Here we go. And you'll notice in Sparks gives us some resp a responsibility set of tools over here where we can do requirements, constraints, scenarios, and we can bring in files, graphic files, uh, web page design, process files from whatever shop you're working in, so on. But what we're gonna do is we're going to put in some simple requirements. So our first requirement here is navigate to about us page. And then we could type in a lot more actor action achievement, acceptance criteria, all sorts of notes here. But for this demonstration, I'm gonna just keep it high level, populate that. The uh, difficulty, I'm gonna leave the default settings. It's going to be pretty easy with the technology uh, website builder that we chose. So I'm gonna just leave it as medium. If, man, let's go low. Priority of course is high. Um, stability, we don't know that yet. Functional, we could set, change the function, the type to display or leave it as functional. I'm gonna leave the defaults for functional, save time in this video. Let's go ahead and save. There we have it, it's internalized. I'm gonna build in some new other requirements. Add one more requirement, I'm just selecting new and we're gonna say navigate to papers page, or keep our position papers, other documentation. Get, could have given another name, but you're just brainstorming and you're keeping it short and straight. sweet. So we added an about UI component. Uh, we need for the requirements, we need to add frequently asked question. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. Could put an ask for, to pluralize it. And we just have three UI components right now. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just draw in some associations. So this realizes or navigates to, and I'm gonna say re use realization. And this realizes from this page, the same thing, realization, right? So, and you can build in more pages. You, you could map out your navigation flows to and from other pages, et cetera. But we're gonna have a global navigation bar at the top of all of these where navigation should be simple. Matter of fact, let's add that requirement. Go here, hit new, uh, build global navigation, right? Um, I hit enter before I hit save. So it's, it's getting ready to close this by hitting okay. Just warning me, hey, I have made changes, save it. So thank you, it saved and it closed. All right, so on this diagram, I have an asterisk right here, which means I need to save. Hit Control S and that goes away. So we're gonna go over to the presentation layer wireframe. As soon as I went to it, it gave me the toolbox for this particular diagram type. Let's drag in a web page. And just it's already preformed template to look like a web page has some navigation tabs at the top and a URL and it gives you some other tooling. Let's go ahead and double click this, open up dialog box on it. I've got two tabs. I'm only gonna have one tab, so I'm gonna remove this tab 
And then on this one, you can put anything you want here. We're going to just put in the uh, URL for this particular uh, site. So this is uh, going to be for track otc.com good enough could put forward slash home no i don't want to do that well yes i'm going to leave that and then uh, put as much notes as you want for this web page this is the home page all right um, and then we're not going to get into the right side do that in another Video, another session. We're just going to keep this very simple. Go ahead and hit OK. And there we go. Remove the tab. And I have a URL for track OTC for this, which stands for Track on Track Consulting, OTC. And good enough. So let's go to the next part. So we're going to bring in an image. This is going to be for our logo. We're going to bring in navigation control for navigation. Just drag and drop it into your workspace. You can resize and play around with these a little bit later on. So we know that we've got a header. So we can put some borders in here, put some control boxes in here, use anything you want. So um, we're just going to use the template for control boxes. And I don't need this, so I'm going to hit Alt-G. Find it in the browser, right click on it, hit delete, and it's gone. So we're wireframing here. We're just dragging and dropping some basic elements in for our web page design. And sometimes you can use different elements. I'm going to use label. But you know that a web page has a header. So this is going to be header. Um, bring in another label down here. It has a footer. These are just things that help remind you what you need to be thinking about when you're doing your layout. Bring in another one here. Um, we're just going to call a body, right? So you know you have a header in web, body, and a footer, at the least, right? And you have lots of things that could be in between, okay? So let's just add that in there and uh, start to just do our requirements and lay out our design. All right, so let's just size our logo. It's going to be pretty small. And it is going to be to the left of the navigation. Uh, we can double click on this element and we can come up here, call this home page, right? We can call this uh, for our papers, our position papers, and so on. And then we can allow folks to navigate to uh, FAC. Frequently Asked Questions, and we're going to add another one, and we're going to call this About. Could be About Us. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. Typically, this is what I do. About Us, and I put that under Fact. I want it under the Navigation, so I'm going to hit Add, About Us, and there we go. It's in the right place, and I'm going to remove this one. And then I'm going to hit OK. All right. So sort of navigation to look at. We'll look at our secondary and tertiary navigation uh, a bit later as we're going. All right. We are going to have a banner. So let's bring in an image element. And that banner is going to cover the page. We can do something like that. And we're going to start bringing in some articles. So we're going to have some text articles. And we're going to have some text with graphics articles as we're going forward. So let's come down here and grab this text field. We're going to drag this in here. And uh, we could have used form on this if we wanted to. But we're just wireframing, right? And in this particular case, we're going to want to bring in another image. This could be an embedded YouTube video, it could be just a regular graphic. So we're going to want elements or tools where it allows us to have whatever we're going to embed on the left and our text on the right. And we're going to also need the ability to switch this up. So I can come over here, grab that item, hit control key, select that item, and then come up here, same height and width. 
and I can select this element here, hit Control Shift, hit Control Shift and V to paste as new. I'll give these names later. I'm bringing in the same size. It's just a fast way of duplicating your images instead of, or elements, instead of coming over and grabbing these and having to resize them. And let's bring in a label down here because this is what we're going to code and fill. This is going to be our footer. So bring up the dialog box or hit F2 and type right in there. And this is going to be our footer, right? And now I can get rid of these, select it, Alt G, find the label over in browser and delete. Yes, I do want to delete. Get rid of this one, Alt G, find it, delete it. Or if I know where this element is, I usually like to hit Alt G as a good practice because you might have different elements as a stereotyped as a wireframe label. You might have different ones and you, you don't want to delete the wrong one. So this is the one I want to delete, I'm sure. I hit the Alt key plus G, finds it instantly, right click on it, select the delete and it's gone. So we've, our header at the top is gonna to have our logo and nav global navigation. We're gonna have a banner in here and I can always come over here, name, banner, but as we're building out. But for time's sake in this video, this is how you can wireframe very quickly in Sparks Enterprise Architect. Now you have the power in Sparks to have all of the data, your requirements, constraints, scenarios, links to uh, real sites and things like that. And this goes you to the wireframe capabilities, gives you some other tooling to add tabs in um, and other things within this particular element. Okay, that's all I want to show you today just to get you started, very high level, simple way, how fast you can build ideas around what you want to do in your site, start inventorying your pages and your navigation, collecting your requirements and other things that are required to drive your project, how you can do wireframing and more. Here's finished product. We've got navigation across the top. You know about us, fact and paper. We have a banner and we have some articles and we have a footer down at the bottom. So we fulfilled our design vision, if you will, and we've built our website. Wireframing and UI design is extremely powerful using unified modeling language, especially tools like Sparks Enterprise Architect, because it allows you to move from wireframing to code to data. So Later on in sessions, we're actually going to develop a website. Uh, we can move from our data model to actual SQL to build the data tables following design. We use it for code and even integrating with our code integrated development environments so that we're able to bring everything back to simulating and driving how our websites, our e-commerce sites, our web pages in general can operate separating out the layers in design, the requirements necessary to drive delivery. If this video was helpful, please leave a like down below. It lets us know what content is beneficial to you. And comment down below, good or bad. Let us know what, you, what questions you have, what you need. Thanks very much for watching this, and I'll talk to you all later. Happy modeling.